Live from Shadowmere Studios, it's the Talkie Box Podcast. Reach out and touch someone. <laughs> like that. You're really uh-huh. failing at this right now. <laughs> <laughs> we got another person. It's yeah. the same person, but from a different place. Time. Different time. <laughs> different time. Yeah, yeah, we got we got Jeremy back. Um, what time it was. Which is who this is. Uh, we got Justin. What up? Jason. Hey! And myself, Dave. Yeah. Uh, I learned something this week about, about Jeremy. Um, not his name. <laughs> no, North Carolina Jeremy. Not not your name. <laughs> no, he goes by Adam. Yeah, yeah. Except where we work, he goes by Adam everywhere else. So it's because Jeremy's my first name. Yeah, and so Adam Jeremy would sound weird. Yeah, yeah. And so when my parents put me in like the school system and stuff, you know, it was they had messed up. So all my teachers and whatnot for. Most of my life called me Jeremy, but you know, everyone else called me Adam. By high school, I just, I got so tired of correcting people. I'm just like, you can call me whatever you want. You want to call me Jeremy? Fine. You want to call me Adam? Sure. You want to call me Princess Sunshine? Dope. But, <laughs> you know, I just, I don't correct people. So like in schools, you know, and like, it don't work. You know, it's just, I'm Jeremy. But then, you know, my friends, my family, it's Adam. So yeah, the- we were at work the other day, and he's telling me about something his friends did where they, I don't remember, I don't even know what it was, but he's like, yeah, they started calling it pulling an Adam. <laughs> and then he kind of giggled about it. I'm like, who's Adam? I'm like, that's me. Like, Since fucking when? <laughs> <laughs> the pulling an Adam was my friend, because they, I'm an impulse spender. <laughs> like Fairness. a bad one. <laughs> Good. So my friend was like looking at those Amazon Black Friday deals, and he's like, ooh, I could go get myself a, an Xbox One S, you know, for like this, you know, like 200 bucks or something. And my other friend's like, well, you don't have that 4K TV to do anything. A couple minutes later, they've got deals on 4K TVs too. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, I'm very close to just buying it. And he's like, no, don't, don't pull an Adam. And um, Did I, didn't know how, I didn't know how to feel about that because it's like, I get it, but I don't like that they have a term for it. <laughs> right. Did you pull an Adam? Um, I mean, I didn't. I don't know. I don't think. I think he t- was able to talk himself out of it. I mean, but, compulsory um, buying is pretty much what the American economy is based <laughs> on. That's true. Yeah, it really is. If if we didn't just buy, you know, everything that we <laughs> wanted the moment that we thought that, like, oh, it's ten dollars less than it was, yeah. like, well, why that's aren't exactly you what marketing money? is about? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest, I, I got the uh, the Skyrim VR set because it was on a deal for Black Friday. I'm like, I'm not going to get it for $150 off anywhere else any other time, so, so you pull got the trigger. It? Yeah, I got it. How is it? It's good. Yeah. It's good. The um, <clears throat> Because of the, the headset, the graphics are not as um, vivid as you would like them to be. They're it's, a lot more pixelated right in front of your eyes. They're yeah. a little more pixelated, um, but it's still it's very fun to play. Uh, you really do get lost in the world because it's it's one thing to be playing the game, and you know Skyrim, it's very immersive. Yeah. Um, but when you have the headset on and you look up and you see the ceiling, and then you look down and you see where you're standing on the floor, and like it, it feels like you can reach out and touch the columns uh, in the halls. It's really, really cool. In the game? In the game. Not in your house? Not in my house. <laughs> okay. I actually was losing my place in my house because I was playing into my room, mm-hmm. and I set aside some space for myself. So... As I'm walking, like I'm going like this, and then I'm continuing to walk, and then I'm going like this, and I'm continuing to walk, and I'm stepping over places, and then the next thing I realize, I'm like, all right, where am I? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I wandered out into the garage. (laughs) I don't know where I'm at. Uh, But it's really cool. Like the the way that it keeps up with you, even though the graphics aren't quite there, Mm -hmm. um, the experience is really, really great. You don't really miss that much yeah. um, in order to reach out and grab things you have the move controllers you actually have to reach out and like pick it up really yeah mm-hmm. it's 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 very cool the bow and arrow is a lot of fun the the sword's a lot of fun and if you're not really comfortable using the move controllers you can just go with the traditional controller setup mm-hmm. and the controls are almost exactly the same okay. so it's it's very fun to play for sure oh cool <clears throat> how many hours have you spent on it not many so far. Probably about three. So uh, pretty much like just through the intro and, just and through the, the intro. first couple of quests. Kind did of you thing. start a new game for it? Or like, yeah, you have it, to start a new did? game because it's a, it's a separate mm. separate game altogether. Because okay. I have the remastered version of Skyrim as well and I was hoping to 
start one of those games on, but because of the way that the the mechanics work, it's it's a different game, so mm-hmm. you, it's a different save file. Gotcha. Yeah, unfortunately. And that's for PS4. <laughs> yeah. All right. PSVR. Well, now you gotta go pick up that Resident Evil VR. I've heard great things about that. Um, there's de- uh, there's a Gran Turismo VR that's mm. still in beta, mm. um, and you know obviously you hope with all of this influx of VR with Skyrim coming out on PlayStation VR, it's apparently set the demand for PSVR like through the roof. Really? Like they're selling out of these things left and right. And my hope is is that once developers realize that all of these headsets are out there, that people actually have these headsets, they'll start really developing VR games in earnest. Okay. Um, I'm sure they're already beginning to filter money towards yeah. towards VR development now yeah. that they a standard has been created. Yeah, I mean, you have uh, Fallout VR came out, or is about to come out on the Oculus Rift, um, and then I, it is believed that very soon it's going to be released on PSVR as well. And what a lot of people are speculating and hoping is that the next Bethesda game that they release, the next Bethesda Game Studios open world game that they release, mm-hmm. that it'll be dual VR and non-VR, that you'll be able to play it either way, okay. which would be really cool. With the yeah. same disc, not having to buy two separate I would assume games. so. I mean, you would, okay. you would think with the capacity of these Blu-ray discs that you would be able to fit enough data on there. Yeah. It would just be the data that it takes up on your PlayStation, you know, it would probably take up like 40 50 gigs easy easy yeah. but i think it'd be worth the experience sounds cool to me yeah right <laughs> <laughs> i look forward to like the um the like the cockpit simulators and stuff like that where you yeah. you, you know like i played a little demo disc you're, you're inside a tank or you're inside a jet and you're actually controlling all the the, you know they've actually got it all mapped out here, yeah. and you can learn to fly a jet through your PlayStation. I actually like, remember that would be so great. Well, Genesis. they have a space fighting game on there called Eve Valkyrie that I played a little demo for, and it was it was definitely interesting. You know, like you're flying around and you're moving up and down, and you're just like, oh, oh. I, yeah. <laughs> how is it? How? <laughs> all right, I thought that's what you said. I remember when I when I. Uh, first kind of moved up here after college when I first moved up to North Georgia there was a, a used video game store that I used to go to and they had this um, this big console thing and it was built I think for either the original Xbox or maybe the, the PlayStation 2 to plug into but it was it was for this mech fighting game or something and it was this huge like as, as wide as this table maybe this deep had multiple like buttons and switches and knobs and faders and uh, joysticks and stuff, and it was made for exactly one game ever. And but it looked awesome, and they were selling it for like three hundred bucks for this one game. You're like I can't afford that for but one it, game. Yeah, which apparently didn't even do well because I'd never heard of it. Yeah, I um, mean. Those those old peripherals though. Remember the old robot from Sega or whatever from a the long Nintendo. Was it Nintendo yeah, it that was had that the robot? Robbie the robot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah and Rob. then they had like one Rob, or two games. Rob? Yeah. You bought this like two hundred dollar robot that basically just dusty in your corner or whatever. Yeah. Because as soon as you get tired of that one or two games, that yeah, it's worthwhile to play on. Like that's it. They're not I making anything. I remember else. the uh, the mat for the in- original NES. Like the Olympic Games, or whatever that you run on and stuff like that. Oh yeah, that, that everybody just slapped with their hands. Oh, yeah, you just, yeah. Got, <laughs> your hand. just just like any whack a mole game, you're just yep. smacking it with your hands. You're not using the hammer. What about the uh, the mouse and the mouse pad for Mario Paint? You guys remember those? I d- yeah, yeah, I do. The mouse and the mouse pad for Mario Paint on the NE, on the SNES was. Yeah. I filled so many, so many hours just <laughs> painting and making pixelated Mario's. You and, could create like. Music, small animations and stuff mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. that too, you right? Sure could. Yeah, yeah. And then there was what uh, the Virtual Boy for Nintendo, which wasn't really peripheral. It was his own. It was its system own system that, and that was the all red screen, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, red all, and black. Yeah, all the colors yeah. were in red. <clears throat> and I remember. Uh, I think it was Attack of the Show back on G Four. Did a did this like horror themed thing, like sort of like Saw, and one of the things was like guy wakes up and he's got a virtual boy like stuck to his head and he's like oh yeah i remember this this is this is fun okay oh man it's starting to hurt now oh god oh no it's like eyes start bleeding (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, that sounds about right. But I remember you could you could uh, rent those from Blockbuster Video back when that was still a place you could go to <laughs> outside of Alaska. Um, <laughs> Because that's what there's now the like, only blockbuster left is in there, Alaska. There's like four or five of them in Alaska somewhere. Um, but yeah, you. So it's not the and, only one left. No, but it is one of the last. One like of the last. But something. you could go and rent the Virtual <clears throat> Boy, and people did that. And my, a friend of mine did, and that's the only time I ever played it. And I, I played you know, and it's it's not something you can play with friends. No, like there's just the one viewer, and that's it. So, yeah, I, I think at one time I went and I played it at a Target or something like mm-hmm. that. They had it on display and. It's very interesting. But yeah. they've, they've been working Shit. the peripherals Shit. market for a while. Shit. I Shit. mean, uh, y'all saw the Wiz, right, or whatever? Or, yeah, or the, what, wizard. the Wizard. The Wizard, yeah. yeah. The Wiz was uh, Michael Jackson, <laughs> uh, Wizard of Oz thing. Yeah. Which you should maybe check that out, too. You know, whatever. But uh, the the Wizard, it had uh, that kid from... Elijah Wood was in it, right? Uh, it was um, the kid from the Wonder Years. Oh, oh uh, Savage? Fred Savage. Fred yeah. Savage. Yeah. yeah, his older brother, Freddy. Freddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Freddy Savage. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that guy, that. yeah, that guy, he had the, the glove, glove, and like they made a movie about how cool this peripheral was. Yeah. It wasn't it, cool at it all. Was not. <laughs> I mean, it looked cool. It, did. it always looked cool, but like if, if, it, if you had one or knew anybody that had one, you knew that shit didn't work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm surprised they haven't re-engineered that because the concept and the vision yeah. of it was wonderful. It was awesome. It really was. Yeah. Honestly, the best execution of like um, a second screen peripheral that I've seen so far was the uh, the Fallout Four, the 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 Pip Boy edition, mm-hmm. where you could put your phone into the Pip Boy glove that came well, with the the special edition. It only works like to an extent. Because if you don't have a phone that'll fit in it, yeah, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I actually specifically kept one of my phones. Yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> because like, even though I'd upgraded to a plus, I kept my my smaller phone just so I could fit it in there and play it. Yeah. And I only played with it a few times, but it definitely enhanced the experience. Where I'm like running along and I'm like, oh no, all right, uh, oh I don't have that on a quick key. You should wear it while you're playing uh, virtual Fallout later yeah. on in the future. After you buy virtual Fallout, you should go ahead and put that on just so you can have, have the weight yeah. and the feel to oh, it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I got it. I think, no. <laughs> <Which> <laughs> one? <laughs> Dials, that's my volume. And I'm fast traveling. <laughs> but, I mean, it was a really cool execution. It linked up right with the game. It happened in real time. You didn't need the extra Pip-Boy peripheral, but mm. it worked. And then a few months after that came out, they actually released a full-scale Bluetooth oh. Pit Boy that already had the screen built in that it just really? attached via Bluetooth, and you didn't have to worry about having an extra. This phone. thing was basically like the Pit Boy; like it was all digital. It was a complete thing. You could right. the buttons and the knobs. Every and the knob button worked. worked. That's cool. And how like the Pit Boy in the game had the hollow tapes? You could take that out, and it was a 16 gigabyte flash drive. Huh. And it like popped in and out, you know. It had like, it could do everything the Pit Boy could. Like That's that awesome. was its thing, but it's it was expensive. Except monitor your oh, God, expensive. your health. It could. Yeah, monitor. I want to <laughs> say that that set was like five hundred dollars. Wow, that was the special one. Yeah, that was the super <laughs> special one because the regular special one was like a hundred and eighty or something like no, that. It was three fifty. The for the original or well for the game like the original Pit Boy edition of the game. Yeah, that one was like one fifty, but that super special one. Yeah, that was. Yeah, it was expensive. Oh, okay, three fifty. My mm-hmm. favorite old school peripheral would have been <clears throat> Sega Dreamcast Virtual Memory Unit. Oh, the little screen that you put into your controller that goes into your controller that allows you to have your own window in games, so that if you're playing a fighting game, they don't see who you're choosing. If you're playing uh, a sports game, they don't see the plays you're picking. Yeah. If you're playing whatever that needs its own little private sort of thing Mm -hmm. you've got your own screen there so it just it was just so handy and there were a lot of games that would download like mini games to that so that you could just like pop that out and play that Hmm. you know some kind of a mini game or whatever like it was a game boy and then you could come back and jack it back into your dreamcast controller and that's cool i never i don't think i ever actually played a dreamcast no yeah they, they were they were interesting very limited i think but uh, it was actually the most powerful console on the market at the time. It just did not have developers backing it. They weren't getting as good of games. Yeah. And then eventually Nintendo bought Sega. So now, There is a game on there. I think it was called Knights. Was that on Dreamcast? 
I was not terribly familiar mm. with the Dreamcast. I, I only played it a handful of I times. I believe there was a game called Knights on there, and it was apparently some big deal game. Like, people really loved it, and it was a big thing. And they recently put that out on Xbox Live for free, and I played it, and it's shit. <laughs> and I don't understand why anybody liked it. But I remember seeing that character so much when, when the Dreamcast was a thing. And and I played it, I was like, oh, this must be great. And it's like, it gives you no instructions whatsoever. And you're just like, what do I do? Apparently, I got this thing. The game seems like that I did that. I'm going to keep doing that. But it gives you no like no yep. indication of no, what you're, you're supposed just, to be you're doing. You're just supposed to like prod around in the dark. Well, Dreamcast is what ninety five or something. No, I want to say it was like no, ninety seven, ninety eight. It was, it was late, late 90s. 90s or early two thousands. No, it was late nineties um, for sure. Yeah. Well, see now uh, another or maybe, like, maybe it was on the Saturn. Maybe that's what it was. But I want to say it was Dreamcast. Um, but still, we're like talking at about like years. Yeah. the the second screen in the controller. Uh, Nintendo's recent attempt at that with the Wii U. Mm-hmm. Was a catastrophic failure because it was still only that one gamepad. All the other gamepads were regular gamepads, mm. and they had some really cool concepts for it, where you could play it without the TV being on, mm-hmm. or like on Super Mario Maker or something, you could start building the level on the controller with the touch screen. It was a little yeah. more uh, easy to control, but the Wii U did not sell well. A lot of people didn't even realize it was a an, an updated system. It was a second system. It was not just an updated Wii. It was its own separate console. Mm. So it just did not sell very well. Uh, and then they have the Switch out now. And the Which Switch. Which is a modified version of that, sort of. It's a much, much better version of yeah. that. They took I, everything wrong with the Switch. I mean, the, the Wii. Wii U and made it better. Okay. Like, I've got a Switch. I have a Switch as well. And it's. Like, I love that thing. Like, because I like being able to sit there mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, with certain games like Breath of the Wild or the one um, one that just came out, Xenoblade Chronicles Two. I've heard it's great. It's fantastic so far, and so like being able to like, okay, I want to play this on my TV, so I sit there, hook it up. You know, I got my controller. That's great. But also, you know, if I want to go somewhere or like I want to go hang out in a different room in my house, boop, right there, just go move it. Bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I'm actually it. I'm interested in getting Skyrim on it because I like mm-hmm. playing portable, but then I'll have Skyrim for four different systems. And that just seems a bit like overkill, but at the same time, it would be a lot of fun to, to play that portable. Then you got the uh, the Amiibo support. You know, yeah. I can go make my Dragonborn the hero of time if I want to. Yeah, you can You can make, uh, You make. can apparently play as Link mm-hmm. on uh, on the Skyrim version. I just think Bethesda should send you like a Christmas card. Or something. <laughs> they really should. I yeah. I love you guys. Bethesda, not a sponsor. Be a sponsor. Be a Come sponsor. on. <laughs> we will talk up your games all much more than we do already. Unless yeah. they're awful. So don't do that. Which we'll if, give you honest if, reviews. <laughs> that's good. We should Marvel, Disney, please also be sponsors. We talk about you a lot. We yeah. talk I mean, like, let's let let's Netflix just... owes us a favor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, We've driven a lot of a lot of traffic <laughs> so your way. What do you guys think we do with our time? <laughs> we're not we're loyalists. About you. We're definitely using you, <laughs> Dave. Yeah, and Dave. that's and that's how you win all the ladies. <laughs> yep. <right there. laughs> we're not talking about you. We're, mean, using yeah, we're using you. you. Good, good, good job, Dave. Yep. <laughs> He's a classy fellow. I make a living talking to people. <laughs> A living? <laughs> so uh, I have I'm been living. watching a new ser- series. I binged watched it. Talk mm-hmm. me. It, uh, it's on the Showtimes. Okay. Possibly. The Showtimes. Um, and it is called I'm Dying Up Here. And it is about uh, the 1970s comic circuit in Los Angeles. Okay. Back before the internet and before comedians could come up just by going viral on the internet. They used to have to actually, you know, be funny, be <laughs> funny, and like work real hard and yeah. like impress a bunch of people who were already in positions of power in order to like slowly step their way up to a, a forum where they could be heard. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is an excellent show. Anybody um, in it that I've heard of? Or? Uh, the face that I am most familiar with is the kid from Hot Tub Time Machine. He's got like a baby face and glasses. Clark Duke. Possibly. No, definitely. Ah, uh, yeah, but do you really know him? Yes. Oh, well then Clark Duke, everybody. <laughs> it's Clark Duke. Hashtag, let's get lunch. 
<laughs> but him it's and do lunch, man. Come on. There are show a little decorum. There are other people. <laughs> Um, as well, <laughs> that I feel like I've seen, but I just can't really place their faces. Uh, if you wanna, if you wanna look up the the people, the cast list, that would be swell. Then we can give some shout outs. But it's about Goldies, which is a very specific uh, comedy bar out in Los Angeles during the '70s when there wasn't a lot of uh, comedy scenes, yeah. and the way that she runs her business, the way that she keeps comedians on her floor without paying them. Uh, they basically just do gigs so that they can build their reputation. Right. And then she provides them like a route to the Carson show. Okay. Because the guy that like he does uh, he he recruits talent for the Carson show he only goes to this one comedy club. Oh, okay. And so everybody that wants to like be Hollywood comedian or anything like that, they come up through these rankings and they like start off, you know, working the door or doing, you know, 1 a.m. shows in the basement. <laughs> and after they've worked their material long enough and start drawing crowds, then yeah. they'll move to the main stage and once they get the green light from Goldie, the owner, then they get, uh, you know, to be looked at for Carson, for other shows, you know, that kind of stuff. It's, That's cool. It's a laughing era, so there's a lot of uh, women's lib type topics that they touch on where, yeah. like, women are just starting to become, uh, not become, but are being recognized for being comedians right. because... For so long, you know, no matter how funny they were, they had to take care of the kids and like mm -hmm. stay at home. And so slowly you're starting to see these female comedians come up into power and how they have to fight against the, the patriarchy that's in existence and male comedians don't want to pay them due respect and stuff like that. And so now is this like a documentary about, about this or is it like... It's a uh, dramatization. Okay. Uh, it, it has... A documentary appeal uh, like there are historical references but it's very dramatized so that the audience can so it, get behind the characters these actors are playing actual comedians that that went through all this or uh, or or maybe just like uh, a representation of specific archetypes of comedians that came up like there's a okay. token Hispanic guy mm -hmm. and he tells Mexican jokes yeah. like the you know all of his stuff is sort of based off of right. his identity and I'm and, wondering if there's if there's like a Carol Burnett and like a Joan Rivers kind of uh, they they talk there, about like, them okay um and they talk about other things um that go on that are prevalent during the time mm. but I guess you know you you got to make your piece of art without getting sued you don't yeah. want to you don't want to name drop too many <laughs> things or or you know but it's it's a really good watch if yeah. you like comedy and you like behind the scenes you like mm -hmm. to know like what's it really take or if you're just someone who thinks that they're funny and wants to be in that industry it's a great watch just to sort of see what kind of experiences go on behind the curtain someone who thinks they're funny right yeah he indicated himself when he said yeah oh, no i know i saw i saw <laughs> this i was just reaffirming that. yeah you get those uh yeah we got we got a few stars and then a few lesser known names uh we got melissa leo oh. academy award winner melissa leo uh ari grainer she was in uh nick and nora's infinite playlist she was in a few others so was yeah. she in that she, she was the drunk before. girl Okay. Drunk girl who threw up in the toilet. Oh uh, yeah, like okay, yeah. Had gum in her hair, or whatever. Like lost her glasses or yep. something. No, I'm thinking of something else. But Clark Duke, uh, Michael Argan Argarano, Angarano. Uh, you've seen Probably. him in some stuff. Uh, Al Madrigal, uh, John Daly. Let's see, we definitely had some more down here. Richard Kind is in there. Dom Irera. Yep. Dylan Baker. Um, definitely have some. Uh, some good, uh, some good, well-known actors in here. Uh, I think Jim some of those Carrey. Were like, okay, I know that face. Jim Carrey is an executive producer, I think, for it. Um, 
and yeah. Seems very interesting. Yeah, I'd, I'd give it a watch if you have time. You oh, know. wow. Hmm. Principal Belding's in it. Yeah? Yeah. Good for him. Dennis Haskins. Sebastian Stan, the Winter Soldier, Alfred Molina. Oh, wow. Yeah, we got a few a uh, few good credits in here. All right. All right. Cool. <laughs> So it's on. A, it looks like it is on Showtime. It runs for an hour long. Um, there's some cool trivia, but I'm not going to get into that. Good. Yeah. yeah. A Seven point three out of ten on IMDb's user ratings. Oh, well, I give it like an eight point one out of ten. Mm. Uh, oh, well. But then again, the material means more to me. Okay. Fair but enough. Uh, one thing that uh, mm. is apparent and that they try to make very obvious throughout the entire thing is that almost every good comedian is built on tragedy. Yeah. Like they take their horrible, sucky lives and all of the terrible things that happens to them that they can sort of commune with the rest of the world through by like, hey, look at all these horrible things I've had to deal with. Let's laugh at them together. Yeah. And so... Make uh, me feel better, please. So and I'll I make feel you like feel better. The worse your life is, the funnier you're likely to be. <laughs> Possibly. Yep. <laughs> or just, you know... Let's depressing. burn Dave's house down. No. <laughs> Tragedy. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I give it two I thumbs guess. up. Shared shared trauma, Dave. <laughs> shared trauma. So my house burned down because my friends are dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Life yeah. sucks. Laugh with me. <clears throat> you might be asking yourself why I'm drinking this beer on the show, and if you are, that's a stupid question. We all know why you're drinking. I this figured beer on it was because you were thirsty. The reason I'm drinking this beer on the show is because today is the anniversary of the repeal of prohibition. Oh really? Mm -hmm. And yet, you didn't think to get any of us alcohol. Nope. You can bring your own fucking alcohol. <laughs> well, Dave, you, you, if, you had, young. if um. you had communicated this <laughs> to us, mm -hmm. your intent. <laughs> there you go. It's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Is that green apple? It's tart. Yep. Green apple cider. Actually, last night I had a, a blackberry pear cider that was awesome. Yeah? yeah. Who made it? Crispin. Yep, that's a good one. Yep. If you like ciders. Yeah, I went to, uh, I may have talked about this before on the show. I went to this bar uh, called the Tin High in Atlanta. We have live band karaoke. Oh, yeah, the Metal Some Mondays. Yep. It was a fantastic time. And uh, if you've never have been they there, extended, never... have they extended their song their song lists? Do they have more songs now? They have, like, I think 200 something songs that they do. Wow. Um, if you've never been or never heard of it, it, they have, it's what's called live band karaoke. And instead of, karaoke with a machine that plays a song for you there's an actual band so you're an actual rock star for three to five minutes while on, on stage song. just yeah. rocking the microphone you drunk people down there singing along with you and everything it's great now the um, good thing about that right is if the band is cool mm -hmm. they can actually change their time signature slightly to accommodate you being a drunk shitty singer that's right <laughs> whereas the uh, the machine it is unforgiving. Yeah, it does not give a shit about you. It does yeah. not care. Yeah, and so but, that that would be nice, you know, like if you were if you were kind of stuttering over the lines or whatever, <laughs> they'll give you like a little instrument break to like <laughs> get back onto yeah. it. Now, what what's cool is they have they have a host, English Nick, who's a, a radio personality here in Atlanta for the river, and uh, yeah, he's on not he's a on sponsor. One river. And uh, what he'll do is he'll stand there and kind of like if he thinks that you're not quite on the right line or you know you're not right he'll he'll kind of sing along with you to get you back on time and, and stuff what a nice um, guy that english yeah. nick uh but they they started out 14 years ago i think with like 75 songs and and they've worked up to about 200 songs now which is a lot of songs for a band to to Just have to be able to know the album version of like it's not it's not let's you know see your interpretation of it it's this is how the song is played and this is how you're going to play it it's very impressive when you think about it. Yeah, and they've very gone impressive. through several, like, the the band they have, like, the lineup they have now is completely different, like, two or three times removed from the original lineup of this band. So it's it's something that's evolved over time, and to have these guys be able to come in and, like, learn all these songs is, is actually really impressive. Yeah. But I imagine they could take that pretty much anywhere, just oh, yeah. find a random singer, like, we can cover whatever. Yep. Like, you need something popular yeah. or cool. 
I know a song. Yeah. And you can actually rent them out for uh, like events and stuff. Like they've, they've done weddings and stuff where people have them as the band and you can go and have a great time at your wedding doing karaoke. I'm down with it. it sounds like a good time. Yeah. Sounds like an expensive time. Shut up. Uh, renting them, yes, it's it's kind of expensive, depending on how long you get. Excuse me, how long you get them for and everything. It's like but. seven minutes. It's, long. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably like fifty bucks. I just want to hurt it through the grapevine one time. Just show up, <laughs> let me do it one time, get the fuck out. Yeah, and they actually have like so they started doing that on Mondays, and they've moved now to like uh, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays also. And now there's another band that does Wednesdays. Which they do what they call soul karaoke, and it's more like R and B and stuff like that. So you can, you I think they, you can do Marvin Gaye, Bruno Mars, Justin Timberlake, uh, Outkast, um, Jackson Five, stuff like that. So sounds right in my head. And now they've started on Tuesdays doing uh, acoustic karaoke. So play yeah. more um, heartfelt eh. acoustic ballads. Not necessarily. It's it's still a lot of the same songs, just acoustic versions of it. They just unplug. Yeah, <laughs> just unplug. Basically, that's what it is. Just, so. just turn the amp off. We're good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been going there for a long ten time. years or something now, I think. And uh, so they know me. Like the bartenders know me, and and I don't get free drinks or anything. But at least they <laughs> like I walk up to the bar, and they're like, "Here's your drink." Like, if you're not you. getting Here's free drinks, card. what's the point? At least like one a night. Give me one free drink a night. If I, <laughs> if I, if I frequent. Your establishment enough. Give me one free drink yeah. every time I come. They've Just every my, every damn. They've time. done it for my birthday, where they they bought me drinks on my birthday and stuff. But you need to lie about your birthday that's, more. That's <laughs> technically theft. You know, a bartender can't just be poor and willy nilly. Yeah. Or Willie Nelson. <laughs> it's one thing for a heavy pour, you know, but it's heavy another pour. thing just giving away drinks. Yeah, like so. some some bars extra, actually give a uh, give the bartenders a comp tab. For oh, yeah. that purpose, to say, you know, like, you have, you know, a hundred bucks to spend on people tonight to get more business back in. That's a good, that's a good deal. Yeah. yeah. Like, the bartenders have their discretion to decide who gets drinks and who doesn't. Mm-hmm. They want to give somebody a free drink for showing up a lot, or if it's their first time, they can give them a free drink. Um, it's one of those things that you can do to <laughs> kind of encourage people to come back. Oh, the last time I went there, they gave me a free drink. Let's see yeah. if I get it again. But really, you just go back again and... Have a really good time. Yeah. So you just keep going back. When I bar- bartended, they would not allow uh, comp beverages, but my GM snuck around that with a loophole and just doubled the amount that I was allowed to have on my spill log, <laughs> which, you know, is for like, oh, miss pours and things right. like that. But you just, instead of writing it towards comp, I just wrote it towards waste. Yeah. And yeah, I dropped a whole bottle and a half. It still goes. <laughs> it still goes to the same place. Yeah, it's the money's just, still going. Yeah, <laughs> the money's gone. All right. <laughs> Who cares if it was down the drain or down someone's gullet? Yeah. But it, it looked Either bad. Way. Like a comp would have made it made me look like, oh, you're out there nurturing the business. Mm-hmm. Instead, I've got this spill log. It's like just looks you, like you are just the clumsiest you fucking dropped like <laughs> nine <laughs> drinks tonight. Like it was what busy. What the fuck is your problem? It was yeah. real busy, and they'll be back next week. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. If you ever done the Virginia Highlands area of Atlanta and you want to check out a good time, hit up the Ten High. So, and I say that so that I can tag them on Facebook later. I'm like I mentioned your thing on the thing. <laughs> free drinks, free drinks, free drinks. <laughs> So it, that part I just said. It is oh. Christmas time. Ish. It's December. It's Christmas Yo. time. Welcome to America. I mean, according <laughs> to Cracker Barrel, it was Christmas time in like uh, July. July fifteenth. <laughs> of I'm course. Pretty sure. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get the. Uh, we'll put one Santa Claus up. in the corner, and then they will nobody will notice it, mm, except yeah. that it goes ho 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 every time you walk past. <laughs> yeah, it. Christmas does need to <clears throat> does seem to sneak up a little bit earlier in the year every year, uh, but now that it is December, I feel officially that it is uh, it is acceptable to be in the Christmas spirit. Yeah, which I am, Holly and Jolly. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got. I gotta say, ho ho ho. I was I was talking to a friend earlier today, and because a Christmas song had come on the radio, oh, I love it. And I was like, "Is it bad that I hate Christmas music?" Yes, it is. Like, no. You're a terrible not person all of it, for it. There's, but there's a few songs I like. But for the most part, I'm just. Can we fucking not? 
Like, we have to. We don't have to. I mean, some people are turned on Silver by the Grinch. Silver bells. Well, there's a difference between good Christmas music and bad Christmas music. And intentionally bad like, Christmas music. But it's all this... Like, like Grandma like, got run over by a rainbow. There's like <laughs> ten Christmas songs, and they just repeat them constantly by different singers. Mm-hmm. That's fair. I love Christmas music, but I like specific versions of specific mm-hmm. songs, yeah. and I really don't like all of the repetition. Um, but I do really enjoy Christmas music. Um, my favorite Christmas album is actually a spoof Christmas album, and it's the Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Yeah, Christmas I was gonna say that's album. my favorite Christmas album. Yeah. It's phenomenal. I'm about to start playing it in my car. It's it's that See, time that, of year. That's fun. When 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 people make like make new Christmas songs, I'm all about it. Mm-hmm. But just hearing. You know, Oh Holy Night again, and and Silent Night, and Jingle Bells, and Jingle Bell Rock, just over and over, the same shit. I can't, man. It's beginning <laughs> to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go. It's really not. It's just pouring rain right now. Like, well, I went. I went, actually. I went down to Orlando this last week to to hang out with the parents, and we went to a little place called Disney Springs, which is essentially, for all intents and purposes, a free Disney mall. Okay. It's just a giant boardwalk style Disney mall, um, and they had all the Christmas decorations up and the, the you know the big tree and the wreaths and everything. And as a person who really enjoys the Christmas season, you know, giving gifts and like just the 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 upbeat positive atmosphere, uh, it, it really just like drove it home. Like Christmas is here, motherfucker. <laughs> and it, it kind of got me a lights. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Christmas is here, motherfucker. <laughs> I bought some Christmas socks because you know style's mm. important. Mm. Um, already started buying some Christmas presents. I'm normally terrible about that. Every year, it's normally like a week before Christmas, and I'm yeah. like, oh shit, Amazon, help me. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Yeah. So I'm I'm trying to be proactive this year and get my gifts ahead of time. Um, but like we all have Christmas traditions and things that just, whether tradition by definition or otherwise, that we, we typically do every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I wanted to talk about, you know, what Christmas is for each one of us and what we look forward to, what we don't look forward to, what we like, what we hate about Christmas. I got one. Tell me. So I used to, I used to work in this restaurant and one of the condiments that we offered was apple butter. Mm. And... I don't like it, but it it brings up these memories of Christmas because my mom had this ornament that hung on the tree, and it was a Santa head, and in the back was a plug, and you could pour this oil into it, and it smells just like apple butter, and I hated it, <laughs> but it reminded me of Christmas, which is nice, and my mother, who I love, um, but yeah, every time I would smell it, like... Positive and negative feelings. <laughs> it's Christmas, and I hate but this, this fucking stench. smell. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I like the uh, the, the smell of uh, pine candles mm. in in the Christmas time. It makes me think there's a nice fresh Christmas tree right next to me. <laughs> no, it's Jason. Oh yeah, that is Jason. <laughs> yeah, I got <laughs> this new Jason. deodorant. Which is actually just pine a... Pine candle? Uh, <laughs> no. It's a car freshener. <laughs> it's, it's pine salt he puts in a squirt bottle. <laughs> I like, you, I like my car freshener joke better. No. <laughs> um, I, so this Tommy Boy. Mm-hmm. What? Classics. Right. So, what, so what do you got, Jason? Uh, I have always been a light enthusiast. Light and not enthusiast. just because of the drugs either, uh, but because of my childhood. My, uh, my mother and my sister and I used to go out uh, just sporadically throughout the Christmas season just to drive around neighborhoods and see... Who was putting on a big show? Yeah, like who's trying to impress their neighbors? Who's trying to piss off their neighbors? <laughs> like, who doesn't? Who has enough money for an electric bill? Yeah, yeah. Like, I know this spotlight is going directly into that guy's window. <laughs> I know what's going on here. One of these two is a dick, <laughs> but by the by the looks of it, both of them are dicks. Probably <laughs> both. Um, so that's that's where all of my joy is. I like to drive around. I like to see all the lights. Now I don't really care for like the the drive through light things because, like you said, there there's a lot of corporate heavy yeah, yeah. corporate influence and stuff like that. I like to just see what random people like to put together, what right. show they put on. Now one issue that I have had this year, 
uh, that I have never experienced in the past, and I guess it's just the way of the internet and hiding behind a computer to voice your opinion, but people are judging Christmas lights, like, like taking pictures of their neighbor's tacky houses and then posting about how awful or tacky or oh. crappy it is. And, and I feel like that's totally against the spirit. Yeah. yeah like I mean, even it, it, if it is tacky, even if they're using different shaped or different colored bulbs, like they're just trying to bring a little Christmas light and a little Christmas joy to the street. Like, right. And, for, and I've already seen like a huge decline in the number of houses that actually decorate for Christmas, and I feel like that's just further discouragement, and that that is kind of a bummer because, like you said, like we used to go and drive around through neighborhoods, like oh, this one seems like really well lit. Let's yeah. just go check out this neighborhood, look at these lights, and you don't see that anymore, and it kind of it kind of dulls the Christmas season a little mm -hmm. bit. And it's one of the things that I also really love is just looking at the lights and the the spirit of it. I all. remember, yeah, I, my parents did that too, and I I always remember. Um, when my parents were like, okay, we're going to go get in the car and go look at these lights. I was like, fuck, I don't want to do this. And then we get there, I'm like, that's actually really cool. That's really mm -hmm. cool. That, that's impressive. <laughs> Somebody put some work yeah. on that shit right there. Now, have, have you seen these these light shows that people do at their own houses, mm. but they have like a radio transmitter set up, and they have music set on yeah. this radio that matches their lights, and they have like a light show going on, and you can just pull up and tune to that radio station and see their light show go with the music. I've never seen one in person. I've seen them online a lot. Yeah. And, it, and I remember seeing them do it to like the... What's that big orchestral... Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the the Manchester... Orchestra? Mannheim Steamroller. No. No? Um, Chainsaw Laser Face. Chainsaw <laughs> Laser Face. Uh, <laughs> I want to say it's it's the... The, the London Harmonic? The Philharmonic or something. I don't yeah, know, but London you know the one I'm talking about. Yeah, like I know the, what you're talking about. Yeah. Dun, 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 this is Halloween. During the Halloween, people yep. would do their lights up to that this too. This is Halloween. Yeah. This is Halloween. So I'm guessing they're taking the, <laughs> um, the the technology that people used to like sell homes, like the little tune to this frequency or whatever, and it'll it'll broadcast like all the perks of the home. It's like having a a looping salesperson. I've never heard of that. You've never driven by a home and seen these some mm. homes that are for sale. Rather than like having a salesperson come and tell you all of the amenities of the home, you can just, just turn, turn radio. to a radio station and there's a looped recording of like, and if you'll check out the kitchen, you'll see, you know, brand new lighting fixtures and we've redone these cabinets and they'll go through all the little intimate details of what makes the house so wonderful. And That's they cool. don't even have that. to fucking be there to sell <laughs> that shit. Yeah. And that's, that's thinking. No, that is, yeah. That's genius. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. So I guess they took that like localized sort of, you know, and and tuned it to to Christmas musics yeah. and whatnot. I remember another thing that we did for Christmas was um, we would go over to my aunt and uncle's neighborhood, and we had to help them put out these luminaries, which was essentially a paper bag with sand in it or or kitty litter, and then a little tea candle light. And uh, everyone in their neighborhood did it. And everyone in their neighborhood hated doing it. <laughs> but it was just what you did. And if there was someone who, like, didn't do it, the neighbors would do it for them <laughs> and just be shitty about it and just be pissed off that they had to go do that person's luminaries. But, like, we could never find anyone in the neighborhood who was like, I love doing this every year. This is why we do it. Like, it was always like, oh. this again. <laughs> <laughs> so you never found that one enthusiast who just runs out screaming, "This is what I live for!" No. Just <laughs> slams it on the lawn. <laughs> this is Christmas. This but is the only thing that gives me joy. Yeah. And every year we would have like my mom was like, "All right, we're going over to help your aunt and uncle put up luminaries." And it's just like you you line the driveway and then along the road, which is like dozens of these little paper bags with candles in them. It might have been a part of the homeowners lit. association I mean, or something. We're doing I it guess, for the moms. But, were they big were, or like were they small? What the like, light? The, the, the the they were. They were like this tall, like you know, little paper bags. 
they were just paper bags like they weren't anything special like they weren't like special no. oh it's it's little <laughs> white paper bags that that on the you know you put a candle inside of it and you you would see it glowing in the bag and that's that's it that's all mm-hmm. it was i've seen those before i can see yeah. if it was like 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 a paper lantern type thing you know like Something no, that you would actually look you don't festive. fuck with with the the steam they got going on. It's white paper bags or nothing, and if it's nothing, it's gonna be there anyway. But a lot of people, I imagine, you know, they they carry on for the children. But we've all been children, and yeah. we all know children don't give a crap. Like, they don't appreciate that. They don't appreciate those nuances. Those nuances are for the moms yeah. that are trying to make sure everyone else has a Merry Christmas. Yeah. And so we are going to play along and we're going to make moms happy. Yeah. And that's just how the world is going to work from now on. Like, that's just... I like it. It's just... It's a very <laughs> noble stance. Yeah. I mean, that's... You got to love your I'm moms. I'm going to do something I hate for mom. Hmm? Because mom does so many things that she hates <laughs> for us. <laughs> that's true. Thanks, mom. Yeah, thanks, mom. You but, don't watch this, but thanks. Yeah, my mom does not watch this shit. <laughs> If she did. She still calls it chupacabra. <laughs> Are you going to do your chupacabra? Like, yeah, mom, I'm, I am. Yeah. Gonna go do chupacabra. What about you? You got toy trains, huh? No. Um, we used to do um, the light thing as well. Like, we'd go visit my grandma in, like, December, and then, like, her neighborhood always used to, there's always, like, one or two houses that are just, like, completely covered you know you could just see them you know it was dark in the neighborhood and then you could just see like light like oh there's a house over there <laughs> but now you know like you said yeah it's just no one's really doing it anymore we haven't yeah. gone out and like looked for houses in the past yeah. couple of years because just we're not going to find them there was one house <clears throat> leading to my neighborhood every year for every holiday they went Balls out for decorations, like like searchlights and shit. <laughs> like <laughs> sweeping the seventeen reindeer, yeah. giant fucking ha- Merry Christmas light signs, roof, every corner, every edge of their house, yeah. and like it lit up that entire corner of the road. And uh, they moved this year, and it was a real bummer. Oh wow! But we did find out where they moved to because <laughs> my. My brother-in-law and my sister were driving to uh, uh, their parents' house, and uh, they saw a house with the exact same lights and the exact same setups on their (laughs) way there. So we know where they moved to. That's nice. So we can go track them down. Another thing that that I remember from uh, Christmas time is the vandals. The vandals. The people who would get, like, you would have the... One thing I specifically remember was there was this (laughs) church that would set up a nativity scene, and then every year, somebody would go and set the camels to humping each other. <laughs> to the the point, sex is very prevalent yeah, in church. <laughs> to the point where, uh, like, this church had to, like, build a fence or wall, really. Like electrified like this camels. Big, this big wooden fence. And then, like, if you want to go see the sensitivity scene, you had to, like, go through a gate to get to it. And it was locked up when people weren't around. So that these kids would stop mounting all these damn camels. <laughs> yeah. so, I've uh, I've done a little bit of holiday uh, vandalism, <laughs> uh, Scroogery. Yeah, <laughs> I um, when I was a younger fella, me and a friend named Brad that you're familiar with, that uh, two out of three of y'all are familiar with. Yeah, uh, get with the program. And another yeah, fella <laughs> named Jake. Yeah. Uh, we were kind of the squirrely hooligans of our group, which was a group of squirrely hooligans. So right. we were like the, the hooliganist. <laughs> yes. Uh, we decided one day while bored uh, during the Christmas season. As most best decisions are made. Yeah. That yeah. Uh, there was not enough Christmas spirit in our friend Brad's neighborhood. <laughs> Um, and this was back in, uh, probably 2000, uh, maybe the early 2000s, something like that. And we got in his mystery machine cause he drove a Scooby-Doo mystery machine at the time. Yeah. And we drove from neighborhood to neighborhood stealing the reeds mm-hmm. off of the neighborhood entrances because they always put up these big old fancy yeah. reeds. <laughs> and we 
we're really good at it. <laughs> so within about three hours, we completely filled the mystery machine yeah. with enormous reeds, you know, <laughs> jingly balls, just like dang, like you're trying to close the the door and yeah. there's like red and silver balls <laughs> hanging boom, out. Boom, there's boom. like a Christmas star, like do, do, do. like over your head in the in the in the front seat yeah. and stuff. So good, good shit. So we uh, we basically filled this van to capacity. Now don't try this at home. Don't do this at home because this is vandalism <laughs> uh, and theft. But uh, and I didn't actually do any of these things. Uh, and it's an elaborate story. It's an elaborate story. Friend so. Of friend. So we've got our buddy Jake, who's actually sort of laying on top of all of these reeds in the back of the van, which is not safe. Uh, and we go back to our friend Brad's. He was still buckled up. And then we begin the re-grinching. Because what does Grinch do? Uh, he goes in, he, he like steals, steals Christmas, Christmas, and then he re-gifts Christmas after he gets his heart warmed up or whatever. I don't ever watch it to the end. But <laughs> But anyway, it so, strikes a little too close to home. Yeah, so we uh, we unload the van and we basically wreath all of his neighbors, his immediate neighbors, <laughs> so that it's obvious that like there's this one house that yeah. didn't get wreathed, and then there's all these houses around it, wreaths up in their trees, wreaths on their <laughs> ceiling. Wreaths on their car, like bungee down, like wreaths everywhere. Yeah. Wow. We also stole a baby Jesus and replaced it with a pink flamingo, but that's not really about. <laughs> that's not the story. That's not re grinching. That's, yeah, that's different. that's just a different level yeah. of our shenanigans. But yeah, so don't try that at home. Uh, but you could definitely get a whole lot of Christmas reeds that way and play an <laughs> awesome Christmas prank on your neighbors. Because we got to watch that guy. Uh, we only got to watch one neighbor clean. <laughs> but it was worth it. Because yeah. he spent at least three hours and probably had about 35 reads when it was all done. <laughs> and I don't know what he ever did with them. I'm guessing he gave them away as gifts or something. Because they were expensive, big-ass reads. You're yeah. probably paying 60, 80 bucks a piece. I mean, this could have been grand larceny if it were a real story. <laughs> Which is not. Which but is if it not. Was. But if it was, then we definitely stole over five hundred dollars worth of wreaths. <laughs> Hashtag wreath thief. Yep. That rhymes. <laughs> the way you said the uh, baby Jesus thing, you could. It sounded like you were just gonna stop at baby. So <laughs> we stole. stole a, we stole a baby one. <laughs> <laughs> we also stole a baby and replaced it with a pink flamingo. But that was on. Never knew. <laughs> that was on Easter. I'll <laughs> save that story for later. Oh. <laughs> so so yeah, I used to get into a lot more craziness shenanigans when I was younger. Yeah, um, I'm a lot more laid back now. <laughs> Less shenanigans. Yeah, smooth. Yeah, we did the LARPing this weekend. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. It was a great time. Had a good time. I really enjoyed it. Yep. Um, they weren't there. Did they you weren't kill there. Anybody? <laughs> did you die? I don't think I did actually. Did you kill any monsters? Uh, I died several times because I played a lot of monsters. But... Weak. <laughs> I didn't die. I See? play. A, I play a character. Yeah. You're I work, right. He did better than me. I, guess. I worked real hard <laughs> at not dying. He didn't die, but you. Dave. Did. Dave was working. Yeah. Jason was playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't have days off. It turns out I'm always working. <laughs> Even when you're going out to have fun. Yeah. If I working. take off from day job, it's because I'm working something else, or I'm do I'm working here. Or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So. Now, you were talking in a previous episode about Such a, hard uh, a day job maneuver. Mm -hmm. You were going to switch a day job, maybe? Or? Yeah, I'm not going to talk about that yet. No? No. Nope. You're going to wait? You don't yep. want to jinx it? Yep. All right. Well, don't jinx it. <laughs> Let me do it. <laughs> Blame it on me. All right. All yeah. right. Because yeah. blaming it makes it so much better. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind taking a little blame yeah. for other people's suffering. That's <laughs> <laughs> If it helps them. Yeah. It's like those prison shows. You love watching those prison and murder shows. <laughs> watching everybody else suffer. Oh, no, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, that was facetious, what you just said. Because I don't do that. I hate those shows. I know you do. I, I know you know that. Yep. 
All right. Well, now that's convoluted. That no one <laughs> understands what we're talking about. I don't understand. What I I don't <laughs> like shows that emphasize suffering. Like, oh, look at these two girls who are conjoined at the face. Let's watch four hours of yeah. how miserable they fucking are. Like, Let's watch this show about this seven hundred pound person and yeah. their deep struggles to survive. Like, I had problem. to get cut out of my house. Well, that's not really worth binge watching. <laughs> Right. Let's watch this show about all of these unfortunate murders, about how these people like, were in love, and then they killed each other. Yeah, here's a family of dwarves. <laughs> let's watch their kids get picked on at school. Like, <laughs> no, let's not. Let's just assume that people are horrible and move on. Is that you a don't show? have to assume. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There are well, plenty of shows out there that just sort of propagate like, look how much better your life is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if they say it with that accent. <laughs> like they're a surfer or, like, or whatever. Hey, bro. <laughs> dude. Your life is tubular. Compared like you to think these. you've got a rough, smooth sailing, dude. Yeah. A bunch of I sea turtles. Yeah, <laughs> a bunch of sea turtles just telling you to suck it up. <laughs> dude, it ain't so bad. Look at this dude who only has one leg. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Another yeah. thing I don't like about dudes with one legs well about <laughs> dudes with one legs um is that uh i heard a lot of uh radio commercials for like uh give to wounded warrior and like uh uh get pets for like a ptsd and mm -hmm. like all of these different charities that provide for our soldiers that are coming home yeah and it really pisses me off that those charities are necessary and that our government doesn't provide for these soldiers that are yeah. coming home. Uh, and that's really all I have give to say it, about that. Yeah. But Given as much as we political. spend on... It's a little political and I'm sorry. A little political. On, on defense spending and military. Given the billions be, yeah, and billions. There'd be a little something for after that. <laughs> and billions. Yeah. Like, let's just cut out three missiles and give 500 guys some therapy. Yeah. Like... Or ladies, because ladies fight hard for this country, too. Yep. I sure do. Don't laugh at that. <laughs> no, it was a weird aside that you did, but... Yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it was a serious aside. Right. Ladies are, are coming up, man. I yeah. We're fucking taking the reins pretty soon, and I'm looking forward to that shit. Yep. Well, uh, I, like, I like me the strong women. Oh, strong yeah. women. Yeah. I don't... I didn't like any of that. <laughs> <laughs> he likes strong women, and I also like strong women. You, you seem to like that he likes strong women. You like it a lot. I mean, some of the strong women he's liked in the past have been nice on the eyes. <laughs> okay. Now, I don't mess with another guy's mojo, but uh, I can appreciate someone's beauty, yeah. in, internal and external. Mm -hmm. You are all external. Mm. Mm -hmm. no, You're... No. Black, horrible person on the inside. <laughs> Black heart, beautiful locks. Thanks. <laughs> right. you sure about that? Oh, you know he's beautiful. Yeah. Just don't <laughs> don't look at his All face. Right. Just don't look so, at so, him. So just gingerly caress his beard. You'll you'll get the feeling. You'll know. You'll know. <laughs> Jeremy Adams being I, kind of a dick. Why would I do that? Mm -hmm. uh, I do well, it better than his. So what's your favorite <laughs> well, damn. thing you've ever received as a gift? Oh boy. I have no idea, because like it kind of varies. Just you know, every year it's like, oh yeah, this is like the best thing ever. You know, then the next year it's like, oh, this is pretty great. And then it's like, the year after that it's like, hot damn, like nothing's ever going to top this. All right, yeah, uh, we'll go back in mm -hmm. time then, since we'll memories go back fade. In time. Um, go back to ten years old and past. Uh, all the way up from mm. one year to ten year, you probably don't remember any Christmas presents from one year old. But in your in your super youth, what was your favorite gift? Because uh, it's only you're only going to remember like two or three. Well, it would probably be. This was uh, I don't know. I guess between like two thousand and four and seven. Um, so I was still, you know, I was a wee lad then. Wee lad. <laughs> And, were, uh, were you in Ireland? Yes, I was a wee lad. Right. A wee lad. A small I boy. Butchered that. I did. It was, it was close enough. So, as a kid, like the Transformers, those were my absolute favorite thing. Robots so, in disguise, baby. Yep. I remember I got like uh, 
the Optimus Prime of the show that was going on at that time. So they, they did like a whole bunch of them when I was a kid. And I'm like, yeah, this is the coolest thing because he's got like the trailer with the attachments. So like, if I don't like this Optimus, I can just go put on like, you know, his punchy arms or something. And, like, <laughs> he's got sounds, and this is the coolest thing ever. It's pretty dope. I know. <laughs> what What about the most influential gift you've ever received for Christmas? Like a, a, a gift that was pivotal in your development, a gift that changed things for you. Nothing was ever the same after that gift. I got a truck for Christmas once. Like, like a like a whole truck. Yeah, like my my first vehicle was a Christmas gift. Yeah. That's awesome. It was a it was a, a nineteen ninety two Dodge Dakota, Dodge Coast Sport, mind you. Sport. Ooh. Yep. Stick shift. And uh, it was I I I wish I still had that vehicle. Like it broke down a lot, but it was it was mine. Like it was <laughs> this you Your know first car ever. Yeah. And it nice. was like it had its issues. It it the air did not work correctly, and in the winter it blew really cold air. <laughs> in the summer it blew really hot air. So and just like, roll the windows down. Yeah, Jesus. Even in the winter, rolling the windows down made it warmer somehow. Um, <laughs> the heat from the engine just blowing back. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Jason? But, most yeah. most influential gift. Um, it I changed mean, you. It would it would tough to actually nail down a serious answer. Um. But I do remember when I was like 14, getting my very first hoodie, uh, and <laughs> and that was the moment that I decided that I was always going to be wearing that hoodie. Now I have uh, I no longer have that hoodie, and I no longer always wear hoodies. Mm. However, when you do, you wear multiple hoodies. I am a hoodie enthusiast yeah. still to this day. Absolutely. I, I collect them. I wear multiples at a time. I currently have three on. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, mm-hmm. it's just something that I like. I even like that, uh, that movie Hot Fuzz where they talk about how the hoodies have taken over yeah. and then they all get killed. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> See, ruined for, another one for you, didn't I? See, for That's me, I feel movie. like it was it was it was a, a two prong gift. One year <laughs> was it a prong? <laughs> it was cool. One year, I got uh, I got my very first uh, personal gaming system. I got a regular Game Boy, the original Game Boy, mm-hmm. and I got Pokemon Red for that Game Boy. And I've been a video game guy ever since. Yeah. Like, it really brought the love of portable gaming, of Pokemon, and just all that nerdery fandom. It all started that Christmas. Right. And I've been a big fan of video games and Pokemon and all kinds of nerd stuff ever since. Right. It changed me. Was that the two prongs? The, the Game yeah. Boy and the game? The Game Boy and the game. Yeah. Because beep, beep, beep. you know that, how shitty consoles are when you don't get a game that Christmas. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool! <laughs> Thanks. It's, uh, I guess I'll go play some demos. <laughs> Unless it was the '90s, in which case I guess I'll look at this for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at all the games I can play on it. That'll be cool after a few <laughs> weeks, and I can afford it with my allowance. Or it's like one of those. You get one family member gives you this, and the other person you got to wait for the other gift. So it's like. Mm-hmm. Oh, because this happened to me once. Uh, we got me and my brother got Xbox 360 games for Christmas, and I'm like, "What the hell do you want me to do with this? We don't have an Xbox." But this was so like far ago or long ago that like my brain didn't click. Like, ah, there's I a bet reason. one of these yeah. boxes. Because I was I box. was still like, you know I was yeah. still young, so I'm like still a dumb kid. I mean, I don't have <laughs> this, so I guess you know the gift's nice. Thanks, Nana. This is crap, man. <laughs> I can't play it. And then, you know, Christmas Day, we open that, and I'm like, yeah. ah, I get, I got it. That, now, I'm gonna, uh, I, <laughs> I yeah. see why you did that now. That actually happened to me with that truck was, like, I, I had my license, and so people were giving me things that were car-related. And I was like, oh, okay, because I was driving my mom's car a lot at yeah. the time. I was the like, steering I guess, wheel cover. I guess I could use this in mom's car or whatever. Air and they're like, oh, we have one more gift for you. Let's Thanks go outside. I was like, oh, okay. Wait, are you kidding me? 
Are you serious? Yeah. I'll bike. <laughs> oh, you got me. Yep. Yeah. Oh, man. All the car accessories and then the yeah. bike. That's I, I'll put these fuzzy dice right over the handlebars. <laughs> <laughs> Steering wheel cover fits no, you great. Put, yeah. you, put, you put the fuzzy dice right underneath the yeah. seat. That's there. the kind of terrible right. parent that I would have been. Like, If I had kids, I would do that kind of stuff all yeah. the time. You Give them all Halloween these... candy and stuff? Yeah. Well, no. You I, would. I would. I would have a secret stash of Halloween candy that I wouldn't allow them to you, get into. You have to like but, check, let, let me check these for poison and razor blades. Like, not in that one. But, but you just have like a, of... a backup candy that you can replace their candy with and you just like grab their bucket. Let me see this. And you just start eating candy out of the bucket. You're like, what are you doing? Shut up. It's mine now. Yeah. You can have this candy corn. No <laughs> one the backup candy. candy. Ooh, this is a good one. I'll just throw a little M&M packet in there. They're mm -hmm. never going to notice. You like Reese's, right? Ooh, Reese's. <laughs> Here's a Mounds. <laughs> oh, that's mean. <laughs> oh, hey, it's the end of the show. Oh, hey. <laughs> cool. Well, Dave, uh, what did you learn today? I learned um, nothing. That yeah, doesn't surprise same. me. I know, right? You learned that I didn't steal a bunch of reeds at one Christmas and then put them all over my friend's neighbor's house. I did. That's what I learned. I probably learned other things, but I don't want to just say the last thing that we talked about. Because mm -hmm, you know I'll call you out. Yep. What was the last thing we talked about, by the way? I want to use that. Candy. Mm. I like That's candy. <laughs> uh, I learned that we all love video games. Yep. Yeah. I learned that Justin, you know, loves video games because he got himself a gateway game boy mm -hmm. <laughs> a gateway game yeah. Yeah. pokemon was definitely a gateway game yeah, yeah. just started just started since. mainlining that pokemon monster it's main series <laughs> jeremy yeah what about anybody else what'd you learn today that it's apparently really easy to steal christmas <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hypothetically uh, hypothetically yeah. yeah like if i it's wanted to easy. it would be really easy yeah Justin? I learned that uh, Jason is definitely not a vandal <laughs> or a thief um, or a lawbreaker in any way, shape, or form, not but he is fantastic at coming up with compelling, totally false stories. Incredibly believable stories. Yes. It was a good story. I, 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 was, I believed him for yeah, a while. Yeah, I was like, bought until he told us incredible. it didn't happen. Yeah. I got a lot more stories about... That mystery machine. <laughs> we, well, we can get to that yeah. next time, maybe. I don't even believe the mystery machine existed. I think yeah. that whole that was story. just a detail I added to create life to that story. Yeah, that makes it, it, worked. Dog. Yeah. it worked. What did you learn, Jason? I already said it, didn't I? No. Nope. I yeah. felt like I did. The gateway drug. Yeah. The gateway, gateway drug. game. The, you yeah. you got gateway yourself a gateway. Yeah, I even made a joke and shit. He remembers. No, I don't pay attention. I learned that you made a joke about a gateway game. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for watching. Have a great night, everybody. Have a great night, everybody.